to the first Eastport Gallery Art Talk of the 2020 season. Joyce Weber, one of the founders of the Eastport Gallery, started the Art Talk series. And sadly, we lost Joyce in the spring. But we are determined to continue the Art Talk tradition. We will not let a pandemic or a social distancing or any of that deter us. We're going to carry on the traditions of the Eastport Gallery. So just want to give a shout out to Joyce. Um, and we do miss her. But this year, thank you. Thank you. Send, send your love to, love to Joyce for all she's done. So we're going to try something new this year, partly because we have to. Um, we're going to practice social distancing by doing our talks out here on this beautiful deck. And this is the first of two happy hour talks. And the theme is art in the virtual world. And this is part one. And today's show, or today's panel, we will be discussing the Life in Washington County video project, which was a, a, quite a virtual undertaking. And I'd like to, to start by introducing the panel. I'll start with myself, um, just because I have the mic. Well, we all have our own mics, but I'm a member of the Eastport Gallery. My name is Joan Loudon, and I was fortunate to participate in three out of the 14 finished videos that was part of this project. We have to my right Laura Whalen who is a journalist and editor of the Quaddy Tides and she participated in this project as a writer and it surprised me because I think of you as a visual artist. I don't know why since you're in the paper every two weeks as a writer but I think of you as an artist because I, I for, I'm fortunate to own one of your paintings. But Laura, Laura contributed, contributed a fabulous piece that we'll be talking about later. To my left, the fabulous Lauren Koss, who is the publicity goddess for the Eastport, <laughs> you're blushing, I'm sorry, for the Eastport Art Gallery, or excuse me, the Eastport Art Center. And she's been, she's had the opportunity to expand her role a little into video production, and you're, you're kind of getting your mitts on a bunch of stuff these days, right? And having fun. Um, she participated in the project as a visual artist, sound designer, and a videographer. She videoed um, Elizabeth Ostrander, one of, one of the videos where she was dancing around with her dog, Nuppy. So um, we'll be talking to, to Laura and Lauren. And of course, the man behind all of this, Mark Macy, who is the Island Institute Fellow, and he's working here for the Eastport Arts Center and Stage East for, what, another year and a half-ish? Uh, about a year. Oh, no, say it isn't true. <laughs> say it isn't true. Well, I want to welcome, oh, one other, one other person I need to introduce, behind the scenes, President of the Eastport Gallery, Jude Kemp, is uh, capturing all of this on on video for future broadcasting pleasure. Thank you, Jude. So, so I want to welcome all of the panelists and all of the the people who are listening today. And I want to start with Mark. Um, first of all, we're, let's go back in time to a whole other era. What what brought you to Eastport, and what were your initial plans? as a fellow before March 2020 happened? Um, well, ooh, that's not working out, is it? You're not on? No. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I can I shout. I it down when we switch. It oh, on. how's that? There you go. You hear me out there? Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. Um, well, uh, what originally brought me to Eastport was uh, this job. It was just a posting that uh, an old professor had sent me, and. Uh, it looked like my dream job and has been my dream job. Um, and I, before all of this happened, uh, I was working on, uh, of course, children's theater workshop up at the Arts Center. Uh, I was about to be in a production that Lou Esposito is going to direct called 100 Saints You Should Know. Um, I can get closer, too. How's that? Any better? That's better. I'm kind of a quiet talker. Um, and a whole bunch of other uh, in-person projects. <laughs> so, um, yeah, in general, my, my goal out here, uh, what they hired me to do essentially was generate enthusiasm for um, volunteerism, both in the Arts Center and Stage East, and try and uh, sort of revamp some of those programs that they have. 
So of course, fast forward to March 2020 and everything changed because all of a sudden we weren't able to do anything live. Everything had to shift to virtual or things were being canceled. So what gave you this brainstorm of an idea to do the Life in, Life in Washington County project and what was, what was your inspiration behind that? Um, I guess I'd always been really interested in um, video as a medium and um, not necessarily film um, and collaborative projects, community-based projects, but I think really I, uh, I was just looking for something to do, you know, I, ha I have this job out here and it was like I've got to find something that's going to be, uh, kind of continue the mission of engaging people and, and building a community. And so. For me, um, what it was was kind of secondary. The first thing was just, you know, what can I do that's going to get a lot of people together, um, that's going to incorporate as many different types of artists as, um, as I can get, and um, just get something, get the ball rolling. And I guess I felt like I had a little more freedom in that way because I, I didn't have, in some ways, I'm... I'm able to make those decisions and just start and not have to wait around for somebody to give me the permission to do that. But what made you extend, you extend it beyond theater? I mean, this, what was so cool about this project was it incorporated all, all of the arts, the visual arts, music, pretty much uh, writing. That was, that was a cool component of that. Had you done something like this before? Yeah, so um, I have a, so I, I do have a theater background, but I'm also very interested in performance in the arts or performance art, however you want to categorize that. So I, um, I have a company called Sucker Punch, their performance research group. So this idea of cross-disciplinary kind of action in the arts has always been really exciting to me. So it was sort of a natural area uh, in terms of my interest and something that you know I was hoping to do later on in the fellowship anyway. You know, there's such a rich history here of music and visual arts, um, and I think that it would there's more that we can do to tap into that and kind of cross over borders and boundaries. But you fleshed out a specific project. So how did the, the, the format for this project come about in your, in your mind? I'd always really been interested by these video triptychs. Um, you don't see them everywhere, but um, they're mostly like in commercials or ads. That's where I'd seen most of them. But I was always really kind of um, taken with the idea of using what's usually you see in visual art and, and religious visual art and taking that and kind of um, moving it into the 21st century and especially with the community aspect. There was something, I guess, visually appealing to me about it and that's why I found it interesting. And then also the idea of trying to, um, you know, take all of these disparate pieces and kind of smash them together was exciting to me as well. Well, we're going to dig deep into the processes at each step of the way, but can you give the, the audience or the people listening just a slight overview of, of what the process was? We, we'll go deeper later, but just the, just the quick, short, short version. Can I? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, can. I? I think from day one this has been always difficult to explain, but essentially it's a large game of telephone, if you've ever played that, where we have... Uh, it begins with a writer, and they have a poem or some piece of fiction or, uh, you know, any piece of writing that they then pass to um, an actor who's reading it out loud. They're deciding what to film, what setting, how to speak it, and then that gets sent to um, a musician who scores that actor's video, and then finally uh, the music is sent to a visual artist, and they get to create a piece. Uh, and, of course, the tricky part of, a, of all of this is it has to incorporate a video element. Right. Right, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll dig deep into that, especially for some of the visual art artists. I think that was the biggest challenge. Yeah, what a pain. Yeah, we were, we were you, your ears were probably frequently burning during the month of April. So you put the call out to call for artists out around the end of March, I think it was around the 26th. Were you surprised by the response? Um, I don't know that I was, but I think other people who kind of heard about the project and were ready to support it were. Um, yeah. I, I think early on we had almost 40 people who were interested, and of course those numbers kind of dwindled as we, we kept going, but I think we had uh, uh, definitely in the high 20s and maybe into the 30s in yeah. terms of participants. So, uh, yeah. So, I, um, not to say, I, I was... 
I wasn't surprised because I think people need something to do, but I was really thrilled with the response, yeah, and that people were willing to like go along with this, uh, you know, crazy thing. <laughs> Well, well, it was a bit of a crazy idea, and, and uh, those of us that participated realized as, as the project <laughs> went on. So what I want to do, um, just to, to give people who maybe have not seen the videos, although I hope that everybody in this community has watched every single one of the 14 videos more than once, but uh, for, for purposes of discussion today, I, I would like to play an audio version of um, one of the one of the videos that was debuted uh, on June 12th, which was the initial debut, um, it's called Gold and Green Ball. And uh, full, in the interest of full disclosure, um, Lauren did the visual art on that piece. I did the music, and we'll, but we'll be talking about all of the four components of that piece. But let me let me cue up Green and Gold. No, Gold and Green Ball. After an hour of scouting and stepping, stepping and sinking, sinking and bending, bending and picking, we were hot from the sun, wet from the slog, and had scarcely a pint of cranberries to show for our pains. Heading back towards the thick woods path we'd come by, a mound of brightest green moss beckoned us, it seemed, to sit on its soft couch in its half sun, half shade, to cool our heads and dry our feet. Lying full length on that sighing moss, the trees seemed to murmur and sigh too. Eddie was lulled quickly to sleep while I looked back over the heap we'd just come from, a landscape so different from the surrounding countryside seemed like a separate room of sorts. The longer I looked, the more colors and shapes I noticed, the more sounds I heard. I took in to the earthy, just right scent of woods with its mixture of old, brown, pitchy fur spills and green smell moss. A steady, bog-warmed breeze bathed my face, and some short, stronger gusts loosed needles from above that looked, sounded, and hit my startled head like a hard rain. The cedars to my left looked like lace against the sky. On the far side of the heath, giant conifers gowned, swayed to and fro in a hypnotizing, undulating rhythm. In the middle, the groundlings danced too, wearing gold and green, seen only in that fast fleeting time when the autumn grasses have turned color, but not yet the leaves. Everything was moving, but Eddie and me, and the short skeleton little old lady trees that lined the walls and daydreamed the past. As the sun's westerly breeze-blown rays made the swirling, twirling heathland glitter and shine in the most glorious golden green ball I could imagine. That was Golden Green Ball, written by Melody Green, Green coincidentally. And um, I've asked Laura, I, I contacted Melody to try to get some input on to what was her inspiration for writing that piece. And I just have to say, one of the things that blew me away most, I think, in this whole project was the quality of the writing. I mean, I was that, because that 
set the stage for the whole production. But Laura, would you would you please share with us Melody's thoughts on her um, inspiration for writing that piece? Okay, so this is Melody's words. As the daughter of two old family Mainers who had hiked, skied, skated, boated, berry picked, swam, and explored a wide swath of the southern Maine landscape across the decades of their lives, usually with various other family members in tow, I soon learned to know, love, and feel like a part of the natural world myself. So when Eddie mentioned the old cranberry bog that was somewhere up behind his riverside camp, he wasn't exactly sure where anymore. It didn't take me long to pull on my hobnailed hiking shoes and start chomping at the bit to go. It was a beautiful early autumn day, and I'm sure the bittersweet nature of such days, imbued as they are with the sure knowledge that something beautiful is about to end, had heightened my senses as had my recent writing class assignment to write something that focused on sensory description. So when Eddie led me downhill on an old deer path, like a buck leading his doe, I was already on more or less high alert. My senses became even more heightened though by the sparkling breeze that struck us as we came out of the woods and saw that everything in the overgrown cranberry bog we looked out upon was moving dancing. This movement made everything seem magical, as if all of nature had come anthropomorphically alive, like the characters I'd seen in A Midsummer's Night's Dream on the outdoor Regent's Park stage in London. And the dance itself, especially the colors, reminded me of a dance my childhood friend once went to at her church. They'd called it the Golden Green Ball. So leave it to a writer to respond in a way that's just as eloquent as the original piece of writing. <laughs> but we're all a little irritated. I, we were discussing this because we want to know who Eddie is. And she did not elaborate. And maybe that's part of the beauty of this process is leaving some of this to our imagination. <laughs> but I, I still want to know who Eddie is. We can make a video piece off of that piece of writing. Uh, we could, honestly. I mean, that's, that's what was, I was reading that and I was, I was blown away. So Mark, this is the first step in the process. 14 writers sent you their pieces. What happened, and that's, that's an example of one of them. What happened next? What did you do? Did you go like, <laughs> I guess so. I mean, there was uh, there was a lot of admin to be done, um, but essentially, uh, I just pass them along. You know, make sure that um, they get to the next person. That was really my job for most of the project until it came to editing. Was just sort of passing the ball along. But how did you decide who the next person was? <laughs> well, uh, I'm sure that's a that's a matter of, of interest. Uh, to, to be honest, the, fir know. the first time it was an, it was alphabetically, and I think that I I went backwards from one and the other. So so you weren't lined up like let's say I had the and some people got two. So let's say that I had we're really getting into the weeds here. But let's say that I had the alphabetical <laughs> list of the writers, and then I would have the list of uh, of the actors alphabetically but from Z to A instead of A to Z, and then pair them up that way. But I'm not sure if that's what I did for that particular one. So the answer is, uh, there was no system. <laughs> well, and of course, you probably didn't know everybody, because you were no. still fa fairly new here, so you wouldn't have known who would be an appropriate match. So you're saying it was quasi-random, is the short answer. Yes, is the short answer to that. <laughs> and it was interesting, because I would have people say, oh, you know, I, I you know, and I, not to out anybody, but you know, there are people who said, well, I'd really prefer to work on this, or I'd really prefer uh, to work on that, and I said, well, <laughs> there's not really a choice in the matter. So, uh, I, I, yeah, I guess there, there wasn't a system. I guess my, my only thing was, I think sometimes in these projects, it's good that I didn't know who was yeah, who, yeah. because the, what happens is you, you pass them to, oh, this person's good for this, or this person's good. For, so, so in that way, I felt blissfully ignorant. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, we we appreciated how it all how it all played out. So the next step is 
that was the, the writing piece, and there was no video component at that stage. So the, the, the written text got sent to actors. And talk a little bit about the, the um, results and what, what was submitted by the actors, because it really ran the gamut. That, you know, the, the, there was no particular formula for how to produce or how to interpret the writing. So this piece, green, Golden Green, I keep wanting to say green first, Golden Green Ball was Jenny Smith from Dastardly Dicks, uh, an actor who I had, we had just worked together on Dear Elizabeth. And she took a very simple, you, I have to explain this because you can't see it, she took a very simple approach. She was just sitting on the porch um, reciting, interpreting uh, the text without a lot of um, extra, extra props or anything. Talk, talk to me a little bit about, uh, you know, how when you were reviewing the acting or reviewing the videos, what were your thoughts on that second stage? I think I was excited. I hoped to get a variety of stuff. I mean, some people, like you said, did something, you know, more straightforward and really focused on the language, and some people made short films, you know, essentially that could be standalone. Um, and I think that I found both of those exciting, and, and um, they have their different challenges when you come down to the editing of it. But in particular with Golden Green Ball, what was interesting to me about that is it was, um, and Lauren did the visual art for that, and both, you know, hers and Jenny's scenes were pretty domestic, you know, and it's talking about this kind of being out in the wild experience. So I, I think there was like this really interesting kind of um, dynamic there between what you're, what you're hearing in the text and kind of those visual images that you're seeing on screen. Well, so when I, I was uh, the recipient of the video and I did the music for that, and so one of the, the, the approach that I took for the music was I really wanted to keep it spare, and I think a lot of the musicians did that. They really respected the um, acting, and I, I think it was really, really important to not get in the way. And what I did, the way I approached this particular piece was I figured out a few licks. I just listened to the video and watched the video a few times, found a few licks on my bass that I felt worked well with the, with the video. But when I actually went to film, I, I put in, I, I listened and I, it was completely improvised. So I really did attempt to play along and adjust the tempo and adjust the feeling to match, to match Jenny. And that was really exciting to me. And that was something that we had we had worked together on the play Dear Elizabeth, and we you actually helped. There were times in the play where you were encouraging me to do that with Brian and Jenny. And so I, I, I was fresh from that, and I did use that. And it, it was very interesting to, to, to see how or hear how the, the musicians worked with the, with the uh, text and not get in the way of the text. Yeah, it's sort of a whole different thing, like you're saying. And of course, you were just coming off of of doing Dear Elizabeth, and uh, thank you, you did a wonderful job, as you already know. Uh, and so it is, it is kind of a different game, and I was really impressed how um, how delicate people were with uh, with that text, and really highlighted it. And and I was thrilled with with everybody's. And it, I was, it's been interesting to hear how everybody did it a little bit differently, and and how they figured out how to uh, play around with it. Okay, so here's where things get tricky. This was, this was the wrench in the work. So the next step in the process was when the visual artists got the music videos. And I was surprised that we did not receive the actor video, which means that we were already given the daunting task of creating a, vis a video of visual art without actually knowing what the script was. And I'm sure you heard some grumbling there <laughs> or felt it through the, um, so I'm gonna let, I'm gonna actually let Lauren respond. What did you think? Lauren did the visual art for Golden Green Ball and, and I, we had a little some email conversations <laughs> because what did you think when you got that? Well, your, your base piece had plenty of room for me so I had to choose what medium should I be a visual artist in and how do you be a visual artist as a video because you think about oh well should I do printmaking or should I do drawing or should I do sculpture or should I make jewelry it's so I, I've dabbled in so many media 
Um, and what, what did you choose? Wet felting. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I guess I just, I made my piece for an entirely different reason, and I did it sort of wantonly, like, oh well, I hope that this works. Joan's music piece has a lot of room in it for me, and I made a piece that I needed to make. Um, I made a piece that for me is in memoriam for my mother. Um, I made it right around the same weekend as her two-year death anniversary. My mom was a fiber artist, but in different ways than I am. Uh, she's she was very precise, a, a weaver, a pattern weaver, a quilter, a knitter, all the things where you need that sort of engineer brain. And I'm more of a improv, mush things around, like melt things and pour them and squish. Um, and so wet felting. And wet felting, it's, it's repetitious. It takes a lot of time to make the material change. And it, it just felt really, really good. And I don't give myself time to do that process you know, especially with, oh, quick, it's a pandemic, let's reinvent our jobs, <laughs> hurry up. And, and I remember feeling really, really grateful to Mark for giving the prompts because it made me make space in my life to even do that process. So I did that process and I videoed it and I was making a gift for another friend's birthday, for her Beltane birthday. Um, and But at the end, I started to say, oh gosh, I really hope this is going to work with the text. And I remember I, I knew that Joan knew the text, and I wrote and I said, will you look at this, and will you tell me am I way <laughs> off? Is this going to clash? Is this going to be awful? And you were very encouraging, and you, <laughs> you, 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 you did this great thing where you you took that huge piece of text, and you gave it back to me in like haiku length. And the way you you what you summarized it. I'm like, okay, I'm okay. <laughs> well, and I didn't want to summarize it. It was mostly because I didn't want to tell her what it was. So it was like, tone. I think I said it's, it's nature. Yeah. You know, it wasn't a, a, like a, a gold, the gold wasn't sequins in Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> it, was, it was golden green. And Take me to I mean, Mardi Gras. It is life in Washington County after all. But, right. but uh, yeah, it was scary because we were kind of operating in a little bit of a vacuum. So, um, and so the interesting thing, so once you got all of that, you put it together, that particular video was edited in that three panel style where you basically let the three videos that Jenny made, that I made, and Lauren made, kind of kept them intact and they ran side by side. Uh, yes, <laughs> that is true, as opposed to well, as opposed to, I know that was the first, those were the first videos. And what was interesting was as the project evolved, the editing got more creative. Yeah, I think, well, in, in part, um, you know, the, the reason for that is you, you do the ones that kind of glue together first uh, are the ones that get done first, I guess, right. in that way. So that's part of the reason, but I, I think... You know, for me, this project, as I think it was for a lot of people, was a learning experience about, uh, for, especially for me, dealing with video, dealing with, you know, a large group. I mean, the, I, this could have very easily turned out bad um, <laughs> because I didn't know what I was doing. You know, it may have Most seemed that... Most of us didn't. Yeah, so, it, it, so I, I it, especially with like these hard and fast rules, the reasons yeah. those existed, were just to give it some sort of structure. And um, I believe somebody asked me for the text at some point and I just gave it to them. Um, so, which I'm sure <laughs> Lauren seems upset about. <laughs> but uh, so, so I guess that it, all this to say, you know, it was as much kind of an accident of, of uh, just trying to set something up. I'm someone who's really interested in, let's just do it and yeah. see what it's like and then we can figure it out later. <laughs> Which is what happened. So we're going to now listen to Grackles, which um, was the text by Laura Whalen. Um, actor was Kathleen Dunbar. Um, John Newell from Quaddy Voices, a fabulous composer, did the music, and I did the visual art. So we're going to listen to the audio version of that, and uh, yeah, and then we'll go from there. Ike swings open the door, white house, yellow with old spore. He glares, 
Pine needles felt the roof, clogged the gutters, spit sap into gummy puddles. The twin pines stand aloof, ten feet from the door. They mark the line of an ancestral divide, the once grand spread parceled into tiny threads. Ike makes a decision just like that, rummages in one of his many sheds, finds the oil-dusted gear, and setting aside his dead wife's fears, climbs up the outstretched arms, loops rope here and there, pulls up the chainsaw, reaches out, touches the tip to a limb, a blade to skin, and the branch as thick as a wrestler's leg lets go, swings. For six, seven hours, the chainsaw winds. From top to bottom, the limbs are struck, fall crackling to earth, with branches crushed and done. Ike grins, cigar clenched between teeth. He squints up to the tallest point, sets its path, with delicate finesse, rips the cord, slices deep, hears above the screen the shattering crack. The first trunk falls. A wave, crusting, suspended, gathers steam, plummets, hits the ground with a primeval roar. The earth trembles and absorbs. In less than 20 hours, two pines are wiped clean from landmarks on maps and the registry of deeds. Later in April, when the grackle mob arrives and lines up on the neighbor's fence, the blackbirds, more than 50 strong, stare up to the ghosts where their ancestors nested, silenced of their raspy cries. I have to say that music was unbelievable. It, it was, it was, it, in fact, I have, I have chills right now, and I've heard this so many times. But the writing was just amazing, Laura. So thank you. I mean, thank you for giving that to us. And um, I, I feel really honored that I was able to work on that. In fact, I kind of, I'm a little verklempt. Um, but, uh, <laughs> sorry, would, would you mind maybe giving us a little insight into maybe some of the background story and what was your inspiration? What's, what was the story behind Grackles? So I wrote Grackles in 2017 with a series of poems um, about small happenings in my neighborhood. And one of the happenings that happens every spring is the arrival of the Grackles. They're noisy, messy, loud, family-oriented birds, and I love them and I hate them all at the same time, but I always look forward to their arrival. It means spring's here. They nest every year in the same pine trees, and in my neighborhood we had three pine trees that were quite old that were the demarcation for old property lines. And one year, uh, two of those pine trees came down uh, because they were making a mess on a new house. Um, and I understood that. I, we all have to deal with what happens to our homes and protect our property. But when the grackles came, they landed on my fence and they really did look up into the sky where those trees had been. And it was a stunning moment to see that, to see them looking up, where are the trees? all these grackles and they found new homes thank goodness but it was it was an astonishing moment to see that happen and of course made me reflect on what it means to remove uh, another being's home while protecting your own home oh wow wow yeah yeah does yeah <laughs> so i wanted i wanted to come back to the the after portion in, in a in a little bit. So John Newell was the um, the musician on on that on that piece. Everybody knows John Newell. He's the, the director of Quadi Voices. He's a, a very accomplished composer. A teacher teaches at Summer Keys, and 
and I was curious in terms of uh, what his inspiration was, and so he emailed me, and I've asked uh, Lauren to to read what John had to say about his musical inspiration. And I will refrain from trying to imitate the very particular <laughs> cadence of his voice, although having sung in the choir for many years, I can produce, I, I can read this to myself and hear it in his voice. He's a good speaker. John says, I was quite taken with Laura's text and its haunting mood. After watching the video several times, I sat at the piano and began playing some notes, starting with a repeated B flat and then playing around with some simple repeated figures and chords. It quickly became apparent that I was working in the dark keys of B flat minor and E flat minor. I was interested in having the music support the drama of the story, so I timed out critical moments in the video, such as the falling of the tree and the conclusion when the grackles return in April, and wrote the piece to correspond to these. I sketched out the music roughly in pencil, marking out and moving ideas as I developed the piece to fit into the timeline of the video. I decided to use just my piano versus digital instruments as that seemed to fit the mood and the story. It hadn't been tuned in a while, so that suited the rustic setting. For my video portion, I simply sat by the Denny's River, close to our new place in Edmonds, and shot a video of the flowing water. I didn't want to create too much visual distraction from Kathleen's and Joan's portions. And I really enjoyed seeing how Mark put everything together. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it, John. Stop it, John. Well, it, w it was such a treat to get John's video in the, in the, in the mail, in my email. Um, he's, he's so sensitive. It was so minimalist. And, and it was interesting because he, he, even though he was a little more um, composer-like in what he did versus what I did, he did mention that he took a few, few themes or patterns and then repeated that. And that's sort of what I did with Golden Green Ball. I just took a couple of, of, of patterns or, or figures and then used that to complement the video. Kathleen's video, well, no, now I, I, I'm, we're going to, we're going to um, wait on that because at that point in time, I had only, as the visual artist, I got the visual art piece, I only saw the music. And I'm like, what am I going to do here? <laughs> because there's this beautiful, you know, John Newell, beautiful piano piece with, a, with just a picture of flowing water in the Denny's River. And I had to look up the word grackles on Google because I didn't know what a grackle was. And so I'm, I'm, I'm basically, I'm, I've got John's composition. I'm a musician, so I do, I do sort of see scores when I hear music. I do actually, my analytical brain does see musical scores. And so that came to, to mind. Grackles, okay, blackbirds, we've got crows everywhere. So I was kind of thinking of the crows. And over the winter, I had been doing a lot of tree pieces. So I was obsessed with the winter tree scenes. So we've got trees everywhere. We have birch trees and pine trees and trees everywhere. So those were the three things that I decided to incorporate into my encaustic painting. Um, I knew that there was a blackbird or a grackle. I knew that there was music. <laughs> and I didn't know much else. And the process, I do encaustic painting, which is um, hot wax painting. And I incorporate a lot of mixed media. So I used photography, music ripped up musical score and what I had to do to make it into a video was I took a bunch of stills through the process and then I also took some video at the end close up and moving around the actual piece and put that together into a video which I sent to Mark. I did cheat because like Lauren when she called me and said well is this going to fit or not because you re we really were working blind in terms of not knowing the text but as a musician, I did know where all of the, the um, actor files <laughs> were, and so I was able to go in and sneak a peek, and that's when I saw Kathleen's video. And the irony was, is the word grackles doesn't even appear till the very end. <laughs> so it was, kind of, it was kind of a red herring, like I'm doing this whole piece around these birds that don't even, sh well actually they show up briefly at the end. So when it, when it came out, Kathleen had produced a pretty fully executed video, um, including the, the cutting down of the tree, the, that one line, um, 
setting aside his dead wife's fears just when 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 he's getting up on the roof um, that's that's a line that just resonates and I and it, I got the chills again but so so Kathleen had, had put together pretty realized work I had just done this sort of you know timeline of, of the of the art production so you we were quite surprised when we saw the video because you t took a lot of care and attention and and I had to watch it a few times but I really appreciated how you really made an effort to work and and sort of coordinate what Kathleen had done with uh, I, maybe I'm mistaken but what what I had done so some of the images that you know the images of the encaustic painting seemed to tie in with her images quite carefully so do you want to comment on the editing process for grackles because it was quite different than just the three videos side by side sure uh, um, uh, yeah it's a good juxtaposition to say like Jenny's video that was very straightforward you know Kathleen gave me something that could have kind of existed on its own um, and that was a case the case for a lot of people and I kind of have to give a shout out to Lauren here because when I had gotten all of the videos I was uh, pretty burned out after you know having run the thing and um, was just about to go home for the first time in like six months and um, was feeling like I just want to get this done man um, and so I was showing some first edits to Lauren and uh, she was like okay <laughs> um, and uh, Grackles was one of the first ones I edited actually and um, it had turned out being one that I spent most of the most time on just because it, it, it happens not not for any you know reason of uh, of you know enjoying it more or less than the others but just because you know you sort of get what you get and you have to find a way to you know my whole job and that is, is shaping away and making work but Lauren really prodded me to take my time with that so I appreciate that and and telling me to keep going um, but you know for me I think I just really wanted to you know it's a, it's funny because it is a video process uh, project but it's really a text project and, and the idea in the beginning was to replicate theater in some way uh, when we couldn't be in the theaters and so it was all about trying to honor that beginning and so a lot of the more meticulous editing I did was when I got videos that were all you know beautiful and wonderfully done and then how do you make these things that a lot of people were doing blind uh, fit? And that's that's what's exciting to me about the project To And I would be interested to hear from Laura about, you know, you've gone, you, you gave me this thing like four months ago or whatever, and you finally see this this finished product, you know, what, what that was like and, and what the journey on that was, or if it's like you've forgotten about it and then suddenly here it is, or, you know, what that was like. No, I hadn't forgotten about it. I it was like sending your child off to school for the first time. You, you, you know, you're you're holding your breath and you think, oh gosh, is, it, is, is she going to come back to me? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I had no idea what to expect. Just like everybody, I had no idea. I I knew that you were going to be doing the panels because you'd showed an example um, to us. I think mm -hmm. so. That was interesting. Um, not being a theater person, I. That was all new to me. Um, but when I actually saw it, I was blown away. Um, I loved the way that you let us pause visually with the black spaces. Because Grackles as a poem, as, as a story, is it's very visual, but there's a lot of action going on. And then all of a sudden, silence. Um, so there's a, it's a busy, it's a busy poem. And the speaking of it is busy, and the music was pretty intense when the tree's falling. And the visual of Joan's painting um, was also, there was, a, there was just a lot going on. And so the way that you paced it um, with those black spaces, I found enormously helpful. I had to watch it a number of times. Actually, I had to watch all of them a number of times to really catch, catch it and let it absorb. Um, but I, I thought that the way that you edited, not knowing that Kathleen had created a whole thing, I, I had no idea what had happened behind the scenes with it. But it, as I think I said to you before, each one was just, the, each one of these videos became a beautiful little gem um, that just seemed like perfection. Uh, so I, I'm just, I was just, my, my baby's come back and she's grown up, thank you. <laughs> 
Well, and and I I had to watch it a few times because I was expecting one thing and it was quite different. And I had cheated and I had seen all the components, but I I really appreciated what I what I really appreciated about Grackles in particular because I knew what the elements were was that that was one where you were also the fifth artist on that. I mean, I, you are on all of them, but in the editing, that was that was significant and it made it a really strong artistic piece because of the editing as well as all of the individual components. And one of the things that kind of blew me away at the end, you took, when the grackles come back and the trees are gone, I don't know if this was intentional, but some of my earlier pictures in my encaustic process were was a photo of the trees with these bare wires and you ended up with those at the very end which kind of summed up that sort of emptiness and it, and that was completely that was at the beginning of my video and it ended up at the end of of, of yours so that was but I, I really kind of kind of moved me so um, I was surprised but I was I love that you you really I felt honored that you took that much time with that with that particular yeah. video yeah i think you know i i i'm sure that you know you can't p please everybody i'm glad that you were pleased but you know i hope that everybody knows that uh, you know everything i did i i did with care and Absolutely. love and it was you know i i just have such uh, i gotta keep it together you know i'm just really moved by this community the community coming together around this project and I just felt so blessed to be able to like spend the time like doing this thing and and I feel like what's exciting about it to me still now is um, you know uh, I'm not used to doing things that kind of last forever but now we have this this video collection that's gonna you know kind of endure, uh, a legacy in a way um, and also I just wanted to really quickly not to keep uh, making Lauren uh, blush, blush but to um, just say the goddess. Uh, yes the, 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 publicity the, goddess yeah. uh, <laughs> just you know a lot of the editing stuff that first I have I don't know I think three or four kind of rough edits that uh, I showed to her and I think the conversations that we had around those really shaped my attitude towards um, bringing it back to the text and taking my time with it and you know it was originally I was like we're just gonna release all of these I, you know, I was sort of at this point where I, I was feeling pretty, I, I, you know, I, running the project was something new for me too. I'm not used to that kind of an administrative task. So I was feeling, you know, a little rough after that, but it was great to be able to talk with Lauren and to have her, you know, in some ways give me permission to take my time with him and say, let's just have them roll and let's get our, you know, let's milk this thing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> let's yeah. make it worth it. And yeah. So, well, of course, because I think you wanted to just say, here's the whole deck. Here it is, folks. Yeah, Ta -da. I did. <laughs> and I said, well, geez, like we could really use to keep having these premieres because we need the, the news and we need the focal point. But that, that also scored you the time. So I said, just a couple at a time, a couple at a time. I think you're the crack crackly, crackly. Yeah. I may be inspiring, yeah. but I'm also crackly. <laughs> well, uh, on that topic, I would love to see a full documentary on this with them all all put together maybe add in this art talk I don't know I'm just throwing that out there there could be a whole whole um, single documentary on this thing yeah if, if I could also just say anybody who's out there because I know we have some participants at least who yeah, were out Elizabeth, there yeah. and and people who listen to this if you have um, ephemera from the project please send it to me photos or scores that you have or just thoughts i would love to be able to collect that stuff um you can send that to me at market uh, eastportartcenter.org um yeah so anyway just to pitch that and are there any future variations on this project or the second uh part two planned i hope so um <laughs> i think uh um there was you know, we met sort of as a post-mortem after the project was yeah. done, and I think I think there was maybe some enthusiasm about that, um, but what it would look like, and I think um, actually Laura had the wonderful idea of how uh, what would this look like live, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and I think that's something I'm excited to see uh, once once uh, things have cleared. <laughs> that would be awesome. Sure, uh, Owen, you have a question? Yeah. So, um, in the one with the Laura 
Elizabeth Yep. And Davis is John. So it was Laura, Laura Whalen did the writing. Yep. Kathleen Dunbar did the acting. John Newell did the music and I did the visual art. And Mark did the editing. You also said that John did a video. Yeah, each layer adds another video. Oh, so the music right. person also has an image and the... Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't understand that. Exactly. Yeah, they're all, except for the writer, the other three components um, were all video. Okay. Yeah. So, we don't let a pandemic get us down. And there are lots of things happening through the Eastport Art Center, through the Eastport Gallery. We're just, we're having fun on this deck. We're going to use this deck because uh, we can socially distance and we are going to celebrate our 35th anniversary year and not let anything stop us. So thank you, everybody. And we'll, we'll, we'll see you online. <laughs>